Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Thank you, Representative Murphy, for offering all of us a way to maybe take some time and think about this more. Representative Kelly, thank you for your words of strength and courage. Thank you for allowing me to stand up, inspiring me to stand up, because Representative Kelly, I was just gonna sit tonight and listen and then vote. I wanted to say something, but I wasn't sure that I should, but when you stood up and the words that you gave to all of us, the courage that you showed, I thank you for inspiring me to do this. Members, I wasn't gonna say anything tonight. I was just gonna sit by. But then I felt my dad's spirit. You know, my dad I just lost. You know, invoking me to share with you tonight. And you know, Speaker Zellers, you recently <clears throat> shared about how a piece of legislation you offered was real personal for you. And I felt your emotions and your pain, Speaker Zellers, and thank you for that. Because this piece of legislation, members, is real personal for me as well. It's not only personal for me, members, it's personal for thousands and thousands and thousands of others in the state of Minnesota. You, mean, you see, members, for me, this is about, as Representative Kelly indicated, and I agree totally with you, this is, in my opinion, I'm concerned about putting discrimination into our state constitution, just like you said, Representative Kelly. And members, for me, this is about discrimination. Even though we've heard this isn't about discrimination, for me, it's about discrimination. And when you have a physical handicap, and you look different, and you go through life, you get treated different. You get discriminated against. You get bullied. And members, I've been there. <clears throat> it was many, many years. I hated how I looked because of my handicap, my physical handicap. And it really impacted my life. And I wish Representative Holberg was on the floor because recently on an abortion bill, she talked about the pain that she felt. And you all remember that with her brother. And I felt her pain that night as well. And Representative Holberg said to us, members, we all have our own trials and tribulations. We all have our own crosses in life to bear. And I couldn't agree with her more. I didn't see this, you know, as a blessing from God. I saw it as a curse from the Lord. I now see it as a blessing, members, but mem all of us have our different trials and tribulations in our lives. And members, whether those crosses and trials and tribulations come from the way we are born or from a terrible accident that changes our life or from a debilitating disease which cripples us and makes us less than what we were or are or from a veteran serving us so that we have the rights that we have. <laughs> Discriminatory actions never, ever should take place in our society. Those crosses that we bear, each of us need to deal with on our own personal way and situation, but never, never should discrimination have any place in our society. And members, I want to share with you, sometimes, you know, we sit here, 134 of us in this chamber, and 67 of us in another chamber, and we sit and impact people's lives every day we are here. And members, sometimes we don't know the impact that we make on them because we haven't walked in their shoes well, I've walked in the shoes and faced discrimination, and I want to share with you just a few stories about my life when I, shared some, when I faced some of that discrimination in my life. And it even goes back to my, my schoolhood days. 
Representative Dabney, when I was in a Catholic school, going to the playground every day when we had recess time, and all of my friends looked forward to recess time. And there was a time, one year in particular, I got picked on every day on the playground at recess because I looked different. Because I looked different. And sometimes bullying leads to, to discrimination, in my opinion. Most kids loved recess members. I hated it because I was scared and had the fear of being bullied and discriminated against. And then another kid by the name of Michael Graves, Michael Graves, stopped the bullying, stopped the discriminatory actions, and put me at ease. Mike, Michael was handicapped also. He had been in a fire and had his legs burnt, lived with it for a long time, and eventually had to have one of them amputated. But Michael recognized like I recognize and like Representative Kelly recognizes and many others that discriminatory actions have no place in society. While I faced discrimination many other times in my life, members, I want to fast forward to my April, May and June of 1968 when I was graduating from Proctor High School. My dad was on the railroad and he was in management. And Representative Rukavina and Representative Anzelk, remember when we kids in high school that ha our dads worked in the mines, were on the railroad, we got a good summer job. We got a good paying summer job to help us pay for college. And in 1968, because my dad was on the road, on the railroad, in management, he had the ability to try to find for me a summer job help me pay for college. My dad put my name in for a labor job. And then my dad put my name in for a clerical job. And then my dad put my name in for a section job on the, on the, on the gang, on the, on the section gang. And the fourth, the fourth job my dad put in for was a custodial job on the road, on the railroad, to help me earn money for college and a good paying job to better my life. For each one of those jobs, members, you had to go and get a physical by the railroad doctor. And in 1968, when I went for four different physicals, labor, clerical, section, janitorial, the doctor looked at me and said, I can't pass you because of your handicap, because of your arm, because of your physical lack of ability. And members, I remember being angry, disappointed, hurt, frustrated, but mostly I remember I will never, ever allow discrimination to the best of my ability ever again. <clears throat> right after that, members, the Equal Opportunity Act was passed, and I'm thankful for that, that every person has, an, has, the, has the right to apply for an, a job that they uh, should be able to get, not based on anything with discriminatory action, Members, I, like you, have been hearing from all sides on this issue, all sides, Republicans, Democrats, metro, rural, pro-life, pro-choice, been hearing from all sides. And members, they've all been asking us to support their position. And that's good. That's what we are elected for, all 201 of us. This has been a really difficult decision for me, like it has for I know every one of you, and every one of you, and everyone outside, and everyone in this state. Because my religious beliefs are that, a, that marriage is a sacred union between a man and a woman. 
I also feel that the church should have the right to marry or not marry a couple based on that church's beliefs. That's a right. That's a freedom. Represent Christ that you, that you fought for and the rest of our service men and women are fighting for. My turmoil is that I'm not willing to allow discrimination into our state constitution, which I feel this amendment does, Representative Kelly, just like you said. Members, I understand discrimination. I've experienced its discrimination, and I have felt discrimination. Sometimes, like I said, it's difficult to know what kind of an impact we play in people's lives until we walk a little bit in their shoes. Members, and I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, I hope and pray that we don't come in here and just sit down and vote. I remember taking a vote on the uh, override on the transportation veto and a number two of you still here had the courage to vote what was right in my opinion and others disagree with that but in my opinion and I applaud still applaud your courage and then members a few years ago we sat in here and we debated GAMC GAMC and I'm thinking to myself during that debate and if you were in here for that debate and freshman you weren't but if you sat in this chamber during that debate it was the most powerful and emotional debate I have ever been involved in. And I thought to myself, it was a veto override vote, and I thought to myself, there is no way in God's green earth that we are going to let poor and sick people not have health care coverage. I know that we are going to come together and do the right thing. And when the board lit up, it was a partisan vote, straight partisan vote. And members, I hope today that if my words or anybody else's words speak to all of you, all of you, about if you think that there's a tiny bit of discrimination in this amendment, I beg you, I ask you, I implore you to vote no. To vote no. Members, we have a state statute, Representative Galwell, just like you said, defining marriage. And members, I know of no judge right now working to overturn that, to change that. If in fact, members, we believe that our state statutes are no, no good and not strong enough, then maybe we should be offering up a constitutional amendment on every state statute that we have. And we're not going to do that. That's ridiculous. But members, please think with your heart and your conscience and vote no.